Hello and welcome to Plus TV Africa. I am Lakwe Banjo with the news on the hour. Three suspects that have been linked to the recent killings in the Plato State were paraded yesterday by the Special Military Task Force Operation Safe Haven. The three men were reported to have been apprehended at Gashish District in Barakin Ladi, local government area in Plato State, and were paraded alongside 14 others. Spokesman for the Special Task Force, Marge Umar Adams, told reporters that when the suspects were arrested, they were in the possession of sophisticated firearms, which included an AK-47 and three locally made guns. Two of the suspects have been identified as Fulani herdsmen, while the third is from the Birom tribe in Plato State. The 14 others were arrested in connection with the recently experienced civil unrest also in Plato State. A seven-man panel has been set up by the Plato State House of Assembly to ascertain the causes of the recent attacks on 11 villages in Barakin Ladi local government area and some villages in Bokos and Riom. Headed by Mr. Yusuf Gagdi, the panel is also to identify the perpetrators, determine communities affected, establish the extent of damage, as well as present appropriate recommendations. The committee was set up as a result of a motion moved at plenary by the re member re representing Josh Barakin Ladi constituency, Mr. Peter Ibrahim, over the attacks. Speaker of the House, Mr. Peter Azzi, said they are expected to report to the House in four weeks. Meanwhile, the Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria has detached itself from the purported statements by the chairman of the group in the north central region, Dan Ladi Sirokoma, on the recent killings in Plato State. The National Secretary of Mieti Ala, Othman Ingalzama, on Tuesday condemned the attack, which left at least 100 dead and many others displaced. Sirama has been quoted as saying that the attack on Plato was in retaliation for the killing of 300 head of cattle that belonged to the group. Negulzama stated that the comments by Saroma does not reflect the true position of Makban and should be credited to him as his opinion. He added in response to allegations of members, the association moving around heavily armed that such individuals should be treated as criminals. Alaji Oyilomo Damole, a former Lagos State Commissioner for Home Affairs and Culture, on Wednesday called for the active participation of more youths in politics by contesting and voting for credible aspirants during elections. Damole made the call at a seminar organised by the Leadership Empowerment and Resource Network in collaboration with the Youth African Leaders Initiatives in Suruliri. The conference, with theme Not Too Young to Run, What Next, was targeted at youths aspiring to go into politics. A former vice chairman of Suriliri local government, Mr. Tokumba Oguntola, noted that the financial resources required for contestant elections was a major hindrance for youths. Dan Mole said the first thing is to join a political party. Be a card-carrying member, then always go to party meetings and pay your dues, because illiterates have taken control of politics. Dan Mole, who spoke on dynamics of running for political office in Nigeria, urged federal government to make public offices less attractive in order to entice only people who have a passion to effect change. An outbreak of Lassa fever has allegedly claimed the life of Mr. Henry Ehimati, a male nurse working on the Oil Palm Company staff clinic in Ovia Southwest, the local government area of Edo. The victim, said to be in his 30s and married with a child, works at the clinic but lives with his family at Upper Sangpamba area of Benin, where he was off duty. A credible source told the news agency of Nigeria that a doctor in charge of disease control at the clinic had observed that the deceased was unusually weak and running a high fever last week. The source said that when he was admitted, the clinic ran tests on him that detected he had 2 plus malaria with protein in his blood. He was later transferred to a private clinic in Benin City last Saturday, where they also conducted several tests on him. Reports say he died at the clinic before they could finalise arrangements to take him to the Lassa Fever Centre at Irua Teaching Hospital. The Edo State Commissioner for Health, Mr David Osifo, is yet to respond to the incident. Two suspects have been arrested by the police command in Imo in connection with the death of Brendan Ibekwe, the traditional ruler of the Imbe community in Orlu local government area of Imo state. 
The spokesman of the command, Andrew Enwerem, told reporters that the late Chief Ibekwe was assassinated by gunmen on June the 24th. The spokesman said his body was found on the Olu Oweri Highway. The chairman of the Imo State Council of Traditional Rulers, Samuel Ohiri, in response to the incident, expressed his concern over the murder, calling it a sacrilege and adding that a thorough investigation needs to be carried out to ensure the killers are brought to book. And we'll go on a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. On, on the foreign scene, Macedonia's President Jorge Ivanov on Tuesday refused to sign the changing of the country's name, which was part of efforts of settling an old dispute with Greece. In a statement by the state agency, the president said he had no mandate to sign the agreement, which violated the constitution and described the name change as a criminal act that violated the constitution. Earlier this month, the foreign ministers of Greece and Macedonia came to an agreement to rename the ex-Yugoslav Republic the Republic of North Macedonia, all in a bid to resolve an old conflict that had been blocked Macedonia's entry into the EU. Although Ivanov's refusal may likely not change the agreement that has already been ratified by Macedonia's parliament, the parliament is expected to override his veto with a simple majority in a second vote. John Bolton, U.S. National Security Advisor, has held talks in Moscow with Russian officials ahead of a meeting with Vladimir Putin. This comes as a part of an effort to lay the foundations for a summit between the Russian president and President Donald Trump. The U.S.-Russia relations have been stagnant since the post-Cold War. They are currently at loggerheads over matters in Syria, Ukraine, as well as allegations of Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. And more recently, the accusations of the Russian government being involved in the poisoning of a former Russian spy in Britain. Trump recently congratulated Putin after the Russian leader's landslide re-election victory and discussed a possible summit to follow, although concerns have been raised by Russia, about the difficulties of setting up the meeting. Expectations for the outcome of any Putin-Trump summit are therefore low, even though Trump said before he was elected that he wanted to improve severed US-Russia ties. 23 aspirants for the forthcoming July 30th elections in Zimbabwe have signed a peace pledge making sure that they had and their political parties are peaceful ahead of the elections. The event, which is, was organised by the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission, is coming after the President Menangagwa rally was attacked. A few presidential candidates were absent, but pres represented by senior party members at the signing ceremony that had high-ranking UN officials in attendance, like that of the United Nations resident coordinator, Bishal Parajuli, and head of the European Union delegation in Zimbabwe, Philip Van Dam. A senior United Nations official has urged African law enforcement agencies to work closer together to combat the flow of heroin and other hard drugs into their borders and territories. According to Reuters, the Amado de Andres from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime of the 658 tonnes of opium, 91 tonnes of heroin and 65 tonnes of morphine confiscated around the world in 2016. The African government only sees just 1% in the total. The Andre speaking on the Tuesday at the launch of the World Drug Report 2018 in Nairobi, Kenya, he noted that there are just not enough seizures happening in East, Eastern, Southern, West and Central Africa. He warned that without tougher action, trafficking rings in the South and East of the continent could start collaborating. The Polish parliament has voted to water down a Holocaust law that angered the United States and Israel and removed parts that imposed jail terms on people who suggest the nation was complicit in Nazi crimes. The lower house of parliament backed the changes in an emergency session hours after Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki asked it to amend the four-month-old law. The right-wing nationalist part of government said the law was needed to protect Poland's reputation. Thousands of Poles had risked their lives to protect Jewish neighbours during the war. But since the fall of communism in 1989, research has shown that thousands of Poles were also responsible for killing Jews and denounced those who hid them to Nazi occupiers, challenging the national narrative that Poland was solely a victim. 
Over 30 homes have been evacuated near Greater Manchester in northern parts of England as firefighters battled a blaze. The fire has been spreading four days in hot weather across the hills of Saddleworth Moor. Excessive wind and soaring temperatures over the last three days have caused the fire to spread and police said that the size and the fact that they have limited road access to the rural areas made it difficult to tackle. According to the Greater Manchester Police, 34 homes have been evacuated in the areas affected by the fire. The fire has also been declared a major incident. Local schools will be closed on Wednesday with residents advised to stay indoors and keep windows and doors completely closed. The army is also on standby to help if required. The cause of the fire has not yet been established. And we'll go on a quick break. Do join us after. Welcome back to News on the Hour. And in business, the market on Wednesday closed on a negative note with a decline of 0.06% at 37,963.93 points. The decline at the end of Wednesday's market marked two consecutive days on the downward thread. It closed with just 12 gainers and 32 losers and had a downward on all share index of 24.61 absolute points. Market capitalization also declined by 8.91 billion naira, closing at 13.75 trillion naira. The closing market was affected by losses recorded in both medium and large capitalized stocks. The share volume transacted closed lower at an exchange of 372.24 million shares valued at 3.18 billion naira, gotten from 3,800 deals, which contradicted the 4,202 deals worth 4.7 billion naira traded on Tuesday. Dr. Mykanti Baru, Group Managing Director of Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, has said the federal government in Nigeria in a bid to get maximum value for Nigeria's abundant natural gas resources, is aiming for the 10% of the world's market share in traded liquefilled natural gas. Baru said this during the 27th World Gas Conference, which held in Washington, D.C. He said the federal government is focused on supporting a rapid growth in power generation through sustainable gas supply. This will help in repositioning Nigeria as the regional hub for gas-based industries such as petrochemicals, liquidified petroleum gas and fertilizer. Baru also said Nigeria is focused on increasing output, which is currently 22 million metric tons per annum, with an additional eight metric tons per annum, which is, in his words, will significantly increase global power generation capacity. Mentioning the Nigeria-Morocco gas pipeline project, he said the project would foster regional economic integration and will enable accelerated regional electrification and reduce desertification. Managing Director of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, Usman Muhammad, confirmed that it has raised 565.2 billion naira to attain 20,000 megawatts in the next four years. He disclosed this at an electricity industry workshop in Abuja, organized by the TCN, to review its plan to procure and install a new supervisory control and data acquisition and electricity management system for the national grid. He said the fund was sourced from the World Bank and other international financiers for its transmission, rehabilitation and expansion program. According to him, the federal government approved TREP to enable the TCN steadily grow, stabilize and modernize Nigerians' transmission network so more electricity can be taken from generation companies to distribution networks. He also disclosed that discussions are ongoing to raise more funds for the implementation of the program. And according to a statement by Zanzwat Bosan, pre uh, press officer of the Israeli embassy, the West African Power Pool has signed a deal with the Gigawatt Global, an Israeli firm, and is expected to build $1 billion worth of renewable energy projects in the ECOWAS sub-region. 800 megawatts of transboundary green energy is also expected to be built as part of the project across the West African region in a bid to enhance economic growth. According to Guy Feldman, Israeli ambassador to Nigeria, he engaged stakeholders in the African energy sector in a meeting during which he said the deal will build the West African power pool and create a regional electricity system. 
This initiative, however, was conceived by Benjamin Netanyahu, Israeli Prime Minister, while addressing the ECOWAS summit on June 5th, 2017. Tukumbo is up next with entertainment news. And in entertainment, Hollywood actor Terry Crews shared an emotional testimony before a U.S. Senate committee on Tuesday following his 2017 claim that talent agent Adam Vennett groped him at a party in 2016. Vennett denied the claims. The former American football player appeared before the committee to back new laws for sexual assault victims. While Crews was commended for sharing a very personal experience, rapper 50 Cent saw it fitting to mock the actor's sexual assault claims on social media. In the now-deleted post, 50 Cent shared memes of Cruz shirtless with the text, I got raped. My wife just watched. And then another of Terry with a rose in his mouth, which said, gym time. When social media got wind of 50 Cent's post, many users said they were done with 50 Cent, with one user saying the 42-year-old rapper's actions are the reason why men don't come forward as victims of sexual assault. When asked what he thought of 50 Cent's post, Cruz said, I love 50 Cent. I listen to his music while I'm working. I prove that size doesn't matter when it comes to sexual assault. American singer Usher, who had a lawsuit filed against him, is asking the judge to dismiss it. The lawsuit was filed by a woman who claims he knowingly gave her a sexually transmitted disease. Laura Helm alleged that she contracted the disease during an unprotected sex session with the hit maker in July 2017. But the singer denies the claims and in November of that same year, her lawyer requested the dismissal of a 20 million lawsuit without prejudice. Now, Usher is seeking to have the lawsuit dismissed, arguing Helm assumed the risk by having unprotected, casual, consensual sex with him. According to reports, the singer wants to cover his legal fees. However, Helm filed a lawsuit in Georgia for intentional infliction of emotional distress and fraud. Usher has refuted his claims. He's also been sued by an unidentified Georgia woman who claims she was diagnosed with herpes after sleeping with him. The 39-year-old who separated from his second wife, Grace Miguel, this year has also denied those allegations and previously asked the judge to dismiss the lawsuit. A song by the late XXX Tentacion tops the charts a week after his death. The track titled Sad by the slain Florida rapper moved from number 52 to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Since the notorious B.I.G.'s More Money, More Problems in 1997, the song is the first posthumous number one for a lead soloist according to Billboard. The 20-year-old artist single racked up 48.9 million U.S. streams in the week ending June 20. He was gone down last week in a robbery in Broward County in Florida. The last singer's songs are currently in the Hot 100, including Second Moonlight at number two, Changes at number 18, and many others. And that's it on Entertainment News. Up next is Udoka with the Sports News. Good morning and welcome to Sport Update on Plus TV Africa. I am Udoka Njoko. The defending champions Germany have been eliminated from the World Cup at the group stage following defeat by South Korea in one of the biggest shocks in the competition's history. And the four-time winners crashed out after conceding twice in injury time as they pressed for goal, which would have sent them through. And it is the first time since 1938 that West Germany or the unified German team has not advanced beyond the first stage of the tournament. And the coach, Wacky him low that his side that finished bottom of Group F in this edition. And still on the World Cup, Brazil avoided a shock by defeating Serbia to finish top of Group E and book a last 16 tie with uh, Mexico. And Paulinho and, of course, Thiago Silva had deservedly given Brazil the win. And the result ended the hopes of the Serbians uh, to qualify from the group stage for the first time, while Brazil now head to Samara, where their last 16 tie will uh, take place on Monday against Mexico, as group winners having top Group E over Switzerland on goal difference. And over to uh, transfer issues now, Sporting Lisbon have sacked their coach Sinisa Mijalovic just nine days after he was appointed by the club. And the Serbian had said his first objective was that to change the club and of course do better than last year. 
But on Wednesday night, the club said he had been dismissed. And a group of 50 fans reportedly attacked players and staff in May after the club missed out on Champions League place on the final day of the season. And nine players have terminated their contracts in response to the incident. And Sporting have decided to end Mialovic's probationary uh, period and cancel his contract, which was reported by U.S. Souza Sintra, the club's president, at a news conference. And he also went on to say that we will quickly seek a new coach who should be presented by Monday. And Mialovic, who is 49, signed a three-year contract on the 18th of June, five days before the dismissal of previous president Bruno De Cavallo. And that's it on Sports Update on Plus TV Africa. I am Udoka Njoko. Back to you, Lakme Banjo. Thanks, Udoka. That's the news at this hour. I'm Lakme Banjo. Do have a good morning.